number 10, First Americans. 2021 brought us a lot of new discoveries. The study of ancient humans gained more information with the discoveries made last year. One of the bizarre finds from last year include footprints that are believed to have belonged to some of the first people to set foot in America. These footprints were discovered in muddy earth at the edge of a wetland in New Mexico and were very well preserved. After some research was done, it was found that these footprints were made somewhere between 21,000 and 23,000 years ago, which greatly pushes back the timeline of when humans came to the Americas, the last continent to be settled by humans. Up until this point, it was believed that the first humans arrived in the Americas around 13,000 years ago at the end of the last ice age. These footprints, which are believed to have been made by children have scientists thinking that these humans migrated to the area during a time where sheets of ice blocked the passage to North America, indicating that they were there much earlier than previously thought. At number 9, Dragon Man. Now, even though the name might not suggest it, no, this is not a half man, half dragon, but it's still a strange discovery. This past summer, scientists discovered the skull of this new human species that they've named Homo longi. Longi being the Chinese name for dragon, and dragon being a reference to the location that these remains were found since they were discovered by the Dragon River region in northeast China. The skull of the dragon man dates back 146,000 years, and scientists believe that this new species belongs to another sister group of the Homo sapiens, so they're even more closely related to us than Neanderthals. What stunned researchers the most about this incredible find was the size of this being skull because it was pretty big for a hominid from this time. This find opened a new avenue of discoveries for scientists, so that's exciting news for anyone who takes an interest in this sort of thing. I mean, with further research, who knows what we could learn from this find. At number 8, Ancient Fashion. In 2021, archaeologists made a discovery that gives us an idea of how ancient humans made clothing. It was always assumed that ancient humans used animal furs for clothing, but up until recently, not much was known about their fashion. With this newest find, scientists were able to figure out how clothing was made all those thousands of years ago. 62 bone tools were found in Morocco, and it's believed that they were used to process and smooth animal skins. This find may be the earliest evidence for clothing in the archaeological record. Records. The bone tools that were found are believed to be between 90,000 and 120,000 years old and were used to work leather. What's fascinating about this find is the fact that similar bone tools are still used by leather workers even to this day, so it's cool to know that our ways haven't changed much over the years. At number 7, Gobekli Tepe. The Neolithic era was the final period of the Stone Age where early humans began the process of domestication of animals and agriculture. For a long time, scientists believed that this era gave way to the process of holding rituals and creating monuments to their beliefs. But with the remarkable discovery of Gobekli Tepe, that entire idea was rewritten as this mysterious site suggested that early hunter-gatherers made this temple as a ritualistic center far before these individuals decided to create settlements and begin the agricultural revolution. Based on evidence found at this site that dates 6,000 years older than Stonehenge, groups of hunter-gatherers came to this site in Urfa, Turkey some 11,500 years ago and carved out this ritualistic site out of the limestone that covered the area. It is believed that Gobekli Tepe was just a stopping point for these early humans. It was a place to meet, hold feasts, and then leave again. Soon enough though, the desire to regularly hold these gatherings prompted the early humans to domesticate plants and animals to have a more dependable food source. So with this in mind, it is believed that these rituals are what gave way to the agricultural revolution, not the other way around. If you've seen any content regarding Gobekli Tepe, then you would know how eerie and mysterious this site looks, and because it's so old, it holds so many secrets that we have yet to uncover. At number 6, Cave Paintings I think that out of all the things left behind by our ancient ancestors, cave paintings are one of the most bizarre. So many archaic art pieces have been found by scientists over the years, from statues to ceremonial pieces, but cave paintings are by far the most fascinating, at least in my opinion. Much like modern art, it is all up to interpretation, especially since the artists who created these cave masterpieces are long gone. Some of the most mysterious cave paintings are those that depict some kind of alien life forms. 
Yep, I said aliens. Even back in the days of the early humans, Homo sapiens have been looking to the stars or even having their own encounters with extraterrestrials. One such depiction of alien life comes from the Wangina cave paintings. These eerie looking paintings depict these sky beings, as they were called. These beings are depicted with white faces, devoid of a mouth, large black eyes, and a head surrounded by a halo or some kind of helmet. According to legend, the Wangina were sky people or spirits from the sky who descended from the Milky Way and created Earth and all of its inhabitants. The Wangina realized how big a task their creation was, and so they sent for more of their people and spent their time creating, teaching, and being gods to the people of Earth. Eventually, they left, either descending into the water or returning back into the stars. This extraterrestrial discovery has to be one of the most bizarre finds from our ancient ancestors. At number five, mass extinction. This one might be a little sad because we're going to talk about how scientists determined just how much destruction humans caused in the early days of humanity. While humans were evolving in Africa, the rest of the world's creatures were thriving for the most part. In many parts of the world untouched by human influence, there were megafauna. These megafauna were able to live and thrive for thousands of years, at least until Homo sapiens came along and ruined everything. As we started to traverse the globe, creating settlements and beginning the story of humanity, we also, in the process, killed off most of this megafauna, causing a mass extinction of these creatures. This extinction event, which scientists have called the Holocene extinction, is still ongoing. Most of the largest animals to have ever roamed the Earth were wiped out around 80,000 years ago and went completely extinct by 10,000 years ago. Some scientists want to blame this on climate change, however, in a lot of places, the timing of the first human settlements and the extinction of certain animals line up too precisely to completely excuse us from having caused damage to Earth's megafauna. At number 4, Baby Burial Though it can be really sad, finding ancient burial sites can give researchers a lot of information about the culture of certain groups of ancient people. At a 34,000 year old hunter gatherer burial site near Moscow, archaeologists discovered the remains of two adolescent boys, and what they found alongside the remains was surprising. These two boys, who looked to have had some kind of disability, were buried like royalty. They were buried together, along with 10,000 mammoth beads, more than 20 armbands, around 300 pierced fox teeth. 16 ivory mammoth spears, carvings, antlers, and human fibula laid across the chest of each child. Compared to the other adult burial sites, this one was quite lavish, but the reason as to why these two were buried with so much care is unknown. It is one of those mysteries from our history that remains unsolved, making it a bit of a bizarre find. At number 3, Old Settlement in an area of Kenya called Panga Ya Saidi, archaeologists discovered a network of caves that are believed to have housed hundreds of people. This cave area houses more than a thousand square feet of space, and it is believed that an ancient tribe used to call this place home. Inside this cave, archaeologists also discovered a collection of various stone tools that date back around 67,000 years. This was the ideal living arrangement for the ancient people who used to live there because the tropical climate of the area would have been good for survival, whereas other areas of Africa would have experienced drought. This discovery just helped further our understanding of how the early humans lived. At number two, Homo floresiensis. Here's a really interesting species of human that has recently been discovered. Homo floresiensis, nicknamed the Hobbit, were ancient hominids who lived in Indonesia around 100,000 to 50,000 years ago, and as you could probably guess by its nickname, these ancient humans were very small. It is estimated that they only stood about 3 foot 6 on average and weighed just over 60 pounds. Homo floresiensis also had tiny brains, large teeth, shrugged forward shoulders, had no chins, and had receding foreheads. So they definitely did not look like the rest of us humans. So far, the remains of these humans have only been found on the island of Flores, Indonesia, and because of that, scientists believe that this species of human was subjected to island dwarfism, an evolutionary process that occurs from long-term isolation on an island with limited food. This island also has pygmy elephants, who are also extinct. What's pretty cool though is that scientists are currently exploring new evidence that might suggest that Homo floresiensis might have already been small before arriving to the island. And finally, at number one, ancient music. 
When you think about ancient humans, you might not associate them with art or music as they were quite primitive, but it turns out that some of our human ancestors were quite musically inclined. Years back, scientists discovered the first evidence of musical instruments in Germany and Slovakia. In 2008, archaeologists in Germany found flutes made from mammoth ivory that date back around 40,000 years ago, and just a few years before that, in 1995 in Slovakia, researchers found other flutes made from the thigh bones of cave bears which dated back around 60,000 years. The Slovakian flutes were the oldest musical instruments ever found, and they were made by Neanderthals. This opened up a whole new world of discovery for scientists, as this find suggested that these ancient people were able to comprehend concepts like rhythm, tempo, and melody. This also suggested that Neanderthals were much more intelligent and sophisticated than we thought. At number 10, Paranthropus robustus. Let's kick things off with a genus of hominin that we didn't get to discuss in our last video. The genus Paranthropus was a group of now extinct hominins known for their robust skulls and distinct jaw shapes. Paranthropus robustus was one of three species within this genus and lived between 1.6 and 1.2 million years ago in southern Africa. These hominins were quite short compared to later humans, standing at an average height of 3 foot 9 for males and 3 foot 3 for females, so these guys were pretty short. This species was known for their chewing. Yeah, weird flex, I know, but the standards for excellence were pretty low 1.6 million years ago. Their teeth and jaws were specifically designed for eating tough, fibrous foods, and their jaw muscles were very large and strong to make all that happen, hence the name Robustus. Other than their impressive eating abilities, not much else has been discovered about this species. No stone tools have been associated with Paranthropus robustus, however it is believed that they did use bones as tools to dig in termite mounds for snack time. At number 9, Paranthropus boise. Up next we have another species of Paranthropus, Paranthropus boise. This early hominin came before Paranthropus robustus and lived in eastern Africa between 2.3 and 1.2 million years ago. Much like other classifications of Paranthropus, this species also had a specialized skull for intense chewing. They had very large faces because of their large jaws and temporalis muscles, which are the muscles that you use for chewing. What Paranthropus boise had that other members of his genus didn't was thick dental enamel. In fact, Boise had the thickest dental enamel of any early human. They also had larger teeth than Paranthropus robustus, and these guys basically just lived to eat. It was their only real skill. Other than their eating habits, we know that Paranthropus boise also lived mostly in grasslands. Now before we carry on talking about our extinct ancestors and talking about their ancient lineage, I would first like to take a moment to ask you guys to consider subscribing to the channel. We've got so many awesome videos for you guys to enjoy and learn from, so come join the Bumblebee family. Moving on to the third species in the Paranthropus genus, we have Paranthropus ethiopicus. Because very few fossils of this species have been discovered, scientists don't really know much about Paranthropus ethiopicus. But we do know that they lived between 2.7 and 2.3 million years ago in eastern Africa. Like the rest of his Paranthropus pals, he was built to eat. The shape and size of this species' teeth suggest that they lived on a mostly vegetarian diet. Since we don't really know much else about this species, I'll instead tell you about what happened to the Paranthropus genus. Well, obviously they all went extinct, but funnily enough, they died off as a result of the very thing that they were designed for. This genus was designed to eat, but eventually they hit an evolutionary dead end, and they all just sort of died off because they were too specialized and couldn't adapt to the new food sources being produced by Africa's changing climate. Paranthropus also shows no direct connection to the family tree that produced Homo sapiens, so when you look at things, Paranthropus kind of just existed on this earth for a hot minute and pretty much a accomplish nothing. That's pretty depressing. At number 7, Australopithecus africanus. In our last video, I told you guys about Australopithecus afarensis, but today I'm going to tell you about his relative, Australopithecus africanus. This early human lived in southern Africa between 3.3 and 2.1 million years ago. They were anatomically similar to Australopithecus afarensis, having a combination of ape-like and human characteristics. Compared to afarensis, africanus had a rounder head and smaller teeth. The remains of Africanus also indicated that they were adapted for walking around bipedally, but they were also adapted for climbing as well. For a while, scientists thought that Australopithecus was a hunter after finding bones near their remains that at the time suggested that they used bones as tools and weapons, but it was later discovered that it was predators like lions, leopards, and hyenas who were responsible for leaving those bones behind. Those same predators were also responsible for hunting down Australopithecus africanus as well and making them part of their midnight snack. 
At number 6, Artipithecus ramidus. Artipithecus, aka Arty, was a genus of early hominin who lived about 4.4 million years ago in eastern Africa. Arty's discovery was very important in the scientific community because the evidence that was gathered from the remains that were found indicated some pretty key information regarding the evolution of primates to becoming bipedal. The foot bones discovered indicated a large toe combined with a rigid foot, and this combined with a reconstruction of Artie's pelvic bone showed adaptations that combined tree climbing and bipedal activity. Artie's discovery also opened a debate that contradicted the previous theory that the origin of bipedality occurred in the open savanna because Artie's fossils indicated that she actually lived in a wooded environment. Before this, scientists believed that humans started to walk on two legs rather than four as a result of the climate becoming drier as environments became more open and grassy. At number 5, Aurorin to Genesis. Aurorin to Genesis is one of the oldest early humans in our lineage. Aurorin lived between 6.2 and 5.8 million years ago and was first discovered in 2001, giving him the nickname the Millennial Man. So far, 13 fossils have been found from 5 different specimens of Aurora to Genesis, and so far what we know about this species is that they had teeth that were similar to modern humans, but more importantly that evidence from their upper femur suggests that they were bipedal, given the evidence of bone buildup found on other bipeds. This species was also able to climb trees, but this discovery was very exciting for scientists because this evidence showed that early humans started their journey of bipedalism so long ago. Because this species is at the base of the human family tree, it had more ape-like qualities than anything else other than the fact that it was probably bipedal. So far, Auroran to Genesis is the only species in the Auroran genus. And number 4, Kenyanthropus platyops. Not much is known about this next species, but we do know that they had an early human companion back in the day, and that companion was Lucy, aka Australopithecus afarensis. Kenyanthropus platyops was a flat-faced, small-brained bipedal species that lived in eastern Africa about 3.5 million years ago during the time of Australopithecus afarensis. Kenyanthropus could represent a closer branch to modern humans on our evolutionary tree, but so far there isn't enough evidence to fully support that hypothesis. Was first discovered in the late 90s in, you guessed it, Kenya. And when the remains were discovered, scientists saw that this early human's fossils featured characteristics that were previously unseen with any other human fossils. Though comparing the remains of Kenyanthropus and Australopithecus afarensis, scientists noted that these two species had very different diets and therefore probably didn't have to fight for the same food source. So far, scientists don't exactly know how to place Kenyanthropus in our early human family tree because there isn't enough evidence, but some people believe that this species could be closely related to the Homo genus. At number 3, Australopithecus sediba. The discovery of Australopithecus sediba fossils in the Malpa cave are one of the most complete early human fossil sets that have been found, and they give a lot of insight into the moment where the genus Homo evolved. This species lived between 1.97 and 1.98 million years ago, and some scientists believe that they are the bridging point between Australopithecus and Homo. Based on the size and shape of Australopithecus sediba's teeth, chest, pelvic bones, skull, and legs, Scientists have been able to pinpoint where certain homo characteristics came from and when these features appeared. Evidence found in the remains of Australopithecus sediba also showed that this species adapted to a different way of upright walking. Normally, we would see humans walking with their feet pointed straight out, but based on this species remains, Australopithecus sediba walked with their feet pointing inwards with their weight put on the outer parts of their feet, showing that humans evolved on more than one path of walking. At number 2, Artipithecus cadaba. Artipithecus cadaba was a species of early human who resembled very closely to a chimpanzee but was also bipedal. This species lived in Western Africa between 5.8 and 5.2 million years ago. Not much is known about Artipithecus cadaba because this species is only known in the fossil record, however these scientists are so good that they were able to determine this species bipediality based on a toe bone alone because they could see that this species was able to push off their toes as if they were walking like you or I. One of the only other things that we know about Artipithecus cadaba is that they had teeth that were similar to that of chimpanzees, but they were more narrow which suggests that they were were designed to eat fibrous foods. At number one, the Denisovans. Now this species is probably the most mysterious of them all because we know that they once existed but there's not enough evidence and fossil data to actually give them a scientific name. Most of what we know about them comes from DNA evidence. The Denisovans were a species or subspecies of archaic human who once lived in Asia. This species is what some researchers call morphospecies which are quote, a 
a group of biological organisms whose members differ from all other groups in some aspect of their form and structure. Basically, these quote unquote humans looked nothing like us nor any of our ancient human ancestors. All we know about the Denisovans is that they are different. This species was discovered in a lab when scientists pulled 50,000 year old DNA out of a finger bone of a fossil that was discovered in a cave in Siberia. Given their age and the location that the remains were found, researchers assumed that their DNA would match those of Neanderthals, however their findings revealed that this DNA belonged to a group of humans who last shared an ancestor with Neanderthals approximately 765,000 years ago. Other than this information, not much else is known about this population. If more fossils are discovered, then they may be granted the scientific name of Homo Denisova, but until then, they remain a mystery to the scientific community. At number 10, Homo heidelbergensis. Let's kick off this list by talking about one extinct species that scientists think is the species that caused the evolutionary separation between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. This is exciting stuff. Homo heidelbergensis was one of our common ancestors who lived between 700,000 and 200,000 years ago. I say that backwards because lineage. You get it. They were believed to have lived in Europe and Asia. These early humans were believed to have been our first ancestors to live in colder climates due to their physical makeup. Homo heidelbergensis were short and had wide bodies, which scientists think was adapted in order to conserve heat since they lived in colder climates. It's also hypothesized that these ancient humans were the first to routinely hunt large animals like wild deer, horses, elephants, hippos, and rhinos, build shelters, and create dwellings out of wood and rock. They were innovators who had definite control over fires and wooden tools. Appearance wise, they had a large brow bridge, larger brain case, and a flatter face. Evidence suggests that they worked in groups, which they definitely would have needed to in order to hunt large prey since at the time, humans were relatively low on the food chain, unlike today, where modern humans stand as the top predator. Homo heidelbergensis marked a turning point in human evolution, and I call that positive growth. At number nine, Homo rudolfensis. Now let's throw back to one of the older extinct human species on this list. Homo rudolfensis dwelled in eastern Africa between 1.9 and 1.8 million years ago and their fossils have been found in areas like northern Kenya, northern Tanzania, and Malawi. Homo rudolfensis was one of many human species living around the same time and area. Other species from that time include Homo habilis, Homo erectus, and Paranthropus boisei, whom we will cover in a little bit. When Homo rudolfensis remains were uncovered, it was originally thought that they were from Homo habilis because of a few distinct differences like its larger brain case, longer face, larger molar and premolar teeth, but scientists couldn't confidently classify this early human as habilis. The size of Rudolphins' teeth also raised the question of whether or not this species was just an Australopithecus with a larger brain, but not enough evidence has been found to support that. Now before we carry on learning about our ancient extinct relatives, I would first like to take a moment to ask you guys to consider leaving a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far, and also maybe consider subscribing to the channel and join the Bumblebee family. At number 8, Homo habilis. Homo habilis, nicknamed Handyman, lived in eastern and southern Africa between 2.4 million and 1.4 million years ago. This species of human was one of the earliest members of the genus Homo because its features were slightly smaller than others of the older hominin species. But Habilis still had ape-like features such as long arms and a moderately prognathic face, which basically means that their lower jaw was still protruding a bit like other apes. This species was given the nickname Handyman because it's believed that they were the first makers of stone tools thanks to their larger brains. Other than their use of stone tools, Homo habilis was also able to survive and adapt so long thanks to their ability to change their diet seasonally. Evidence shown in tooth studies tells us that because their tooth enamel was still strong like Australopithecus, they were still good for lots of chewing, therefore they were able to break down a larger array of foods, including tougher foods. Homo habilis was also believed to have been the ancestor of Homo erectus, but since scientists have found evidence suggesting that they actually coexisted in Eastern Africa, that put a hole, so to speak, in the evolutionary timeline, so now they don't know who fits where. At number 7, Homo florensis. Here's a really interesting species of human that might not have made it into your textbooks. Homo florensis, nicknamed the Hobbit, lived in Indonesia about 100,000 to 50,000 years ago. And as you could probably guess by its nickname, these ancient humans were very, very small. 
It is estimated that they only stood about 3 foot 6 on average and weighed just over 60 pounds. Homo forensis also had tiny brains, large teeth, shrugged forward shoulders, had no chins, and receding foreheads. So they definitely didn't look like the rest of us humans. So far, the remains of these humans have only been found on the island of Flores, Indonesia, and because of that, scientists believe that this species of human was subjected to island dwarfism, an evolutionary process that occurs from long-term isolation on an island with limited food. This island also had pygmy elephants who are also extinct, unfortunately. I would have liked to have one as a pet. Cool. What's pretty cool though is that scientists are currently exploring new evidence that might suggest that Homo forensis might have already been small before even arriving to the island. At number 6, Ceylanthropus chidensis. Now we're going to throw it back super far with this next human species who lived between 7 and 6 million years ago. This early human species is one of the oldest known species on the human family tree and they lived in West Central Africa. It is believed that walking upright helped the species survive living in diverse habitats like grasslands and forests. This species was essentially the bridging point of evolution from ape to human. Though they still possessed ape-like qualities like a small brain, sloping face, very prominent brow ridges, and elongated skull, they also had human-like qualities such as small canine teeth, a short middle part of the face, and a spinal cord opening underneath the skull instead of towards the back as seen in non-bipedal apes. Not much else is known about this species due to lack of fossils, but it's still cool to be able to see the moment in time where we went from apes to humans. At number 5, Australopithecus afarensis. Australopithecus afarensis is one of the longest living early human species out there. Also referred to as Lucy's species, these early humans lived between 3.85 and 2.95 million years ago, and over 300 specimens have been collected so far. Lucy's species lived for approximately 900,000 years, which is over four times longer than our own species. What's pretty cool about these ancient humans is that similarly to chimpanzees, Afarensis young grew to maturity much faster than modern humans, leaving parental units less time for guidance and parental socialization. Imagine if your adult life began before the age of 18. I could never. I'm still having a hard time wrapping my head around the fact that I'm an adult now, and I'm 22. Like, give me more time, please. I'm not ready. Australopithecus afarensis had ape and human-like qualities. For the most part, they were pretty apey. Their faces were more so like an ape, they had long arms with curved fingers for climbing trees, but they also walked upright and had small canine teeth like every other early human species. These guys also survived off a mostly fruit diet, but sometimes they ate the odd lizard or two. Because they had curved fingers, scientists want to know if Lucy's species walked around most of the time or if they still spent their time in trees, but that's just one of the many unanswered questions about this early human. Item number 4, Homo erectus. Moving right along, we have Homo erectus. This early human species was the first to possess more modern human-like features and body proportions. Before Homo erectus, early human species had short legs and long arms, but with this one, they were shown to have long legs and short arms like us. This suggests that they were more adapted to living life on the ground with the ability to walk or even run longer distances. Now with their newly adapted ability to travel longer distances on foot, combined with their larger brains, this meant that they needed more fuel to survive. It's believed that they ate more protein that could be easily digested, and with their shorter digestive tract, it took them less time for those nutrients to be absorbed. Scientists also discovered the earliest evidence of hearths during the time of Homo erectus, which suggests that these early humans spent time around a fire cooking their food and socializing with their group. Some believe that Homo erectus may have been the direct ancestor to Homo sapiens, but there's not enough evidence to come to this conclusion just yet. At number 3, Homo naledi. Homo naledi is the most recently discovered early human species, so not much is known about them yet. What we do know is that these early humans lived between 335,000 and 236,000 years ago. The evolutionary tree of the Homo genus is very messy already, so placing this new species on that timeline is still pretty tricky. Based on specific findings from this species, it looks like Homo naledi possesses some qualities that are more Australopithecus-like due to the size of their pelvises and shoulders, and others that are more Homo because of the size of their hands, feet, and brains. There's much more research that needs to be done on this species, but it might answer a lot of questions for scientists. At number 2, Homo neanderthalensis. Though you may have heard of Homo neanderthalensis, or the Neanderthal, how much do you really know about 
about these early humans. The Neanderthals are our closest extinct human relative. Though they are known for their signature face shapes with their large faces, angled cheekbones, and large noses, they are also some of the most interesting early humans because evidence has been found that paints a picture of their behaviors and rituals. Neanderthals created and used a wide array of tools. They controlled fire, lived in shelters, made and wore clothing, they were good at hunting, and they even made ornamental or symbolic items, which really wasn't a thing before then. Another interesting fact about Neanderthals is that these early humans practiced very Rights. There's been evidence to show that these early humans would deliberately bury their dead and even mark their burial sites with offerings like flowers. No other species up until that point had ever done anything like this, so I think that's pretty cool. And finally, at number one, Homo sapiens. Now you're probably saying to yourself, uh, Brie, these humans are not extinct and we certainly know that they exist. And yes, I know that. However, how much do you really know about your own species? And did you know that we are currently going extinct? Yeah, let's start with the facts though. We Homo sapiens popped up on this earth in Africa about 300,000 years ago and we've been here ever since. Go us, I think. De debatable. What made us different from other humans who were lurking about was our ability to adapt. See, when times got rough for other early humans, most of them weren't able to adapt to their environment and they soon died off, whether from the elements or from being killed. On top of that, we were skilled with our weapons and tools. We were able to make smaller, more complex, refined tools, including composite stone tools, fish hooks and harpoons, bows and arrows, spear throwers, and sewing needles. Soon, we were able to go from hunting and gathering to farming, changing the earth to fit our needs rather than hunt for whatever we could. We were able to go off and travel the world, settling in every continent, developing cultures, cities, empires, and accidentally domesticating dogs. Cause yeah, we kinda did that.